I said, as we declare it, there is no one like our God. Amen? Come on, just remember that He delights in a cheerful giver. Let's put our hands together. Come on. Oh, yeah. This is a new song. If you get lost somewhere in it, just rejoice. <laughs> like this. Come on, let's practice. All right now, come on, come on. If you can act crazy at volleyball games, come on now. If you can act crazy at football games, then we sure can act crazy for the Lord. Amen. Come on. Here we go. Lift up the name of Jesus. Come on. Lift up the name of Jesus. 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 Lift up the name of your name. Your name. Lift up the name of Jesus. 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 Your name be praised. Now tell your neighbor. Lift up the name of Jesus. Come. I lift up the name of Jesus. I lift up the name of Jesus. I lift up the name of Jesus. Lift up the name of 
team this morning. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, amen, Brother Carlos. God bless you. message will be preached. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This message will be preached. Amen. Amen. I often battle before I preach and um, I do believe a lot of it has to do um, with like Richard said the enemy doesn't want <coughs> the enemy doesn't want us to receive what God is depositing into our spirit. Amen? Amen? Praise the Lord. But God's grace is here. Amen. Hallelujah. So if I sound a little different, okay. just be blessed. But I will speak in English. <laughs> so you will be blessed. Praise the Lord. And I believe that as I preach... Uh, my voice will get stronger and stronger. Amen. And praise the Lord. I do have one very unfortunate news for you today. Um, I know it's very tough for you to receive this. But I may not be able to sing today. Please reserve the tears for after the service. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's get right into the message. The last three times I preached, I preached on a series entitled Resting on Mount Zion, part one through three, and we're going to conclude today <clears throat> with Resting on Mount Zion, part four. And it's the final message in this series and the subtitle to this message is unconditional predestination this message is one that in the flesh or maybe if you hear it for the first time it may be difficult to understand or to receive but as the Holy Spirit breaks down the religious walls in our lives and shows us that this truth is biblical and it is in the scriptures. And Jesus often spoke of unconditional predestination throughout the scriptures. And the reason it's difficult for us to believe in this message is because we have a tendency and it is in our um, Adamic nature and in our, it is the nature of our flesh 
to believe that we have something to do with our salvation. And that's what we want to believe because we want a certain level of control. We feel safe when we feel that, oh, I'm a good person and God chose me because I'm a good person. God saw something nice inside of me. That's why he chose me. So if he chooses not to choose someone, maybe like Osama Bin Laden or Adolf Hitler or Jeffrey Dahmer or somebody like that, or Ted Bundy, if he decides not to choose someone like that, it's maybe because their life exposes that maybe there's wickedness in their heart. Oh, but not me. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a pretty good guy like me. But if you really look at it, saints, is that the truth? You know, the, the words to that song is that he saved a wretch like me. Like Pastor Lloyd, it is hard for me to receive that in my flesh. But when the Holy Spirit reveals where we've been saved from and the Adamic nature that we received from Adam when we were born and the total depravity of our darkness that we were in, we realize that we... <clears throat> You can get a personal revelation that you feel like you're even more dark than a Hitler or a, a, a Dahmer because it's your own personal revelation and you can see the own darkness within yourself and you know what God saved you from. And you need this personal revelation for you to really come to a place of true and genuine appreciation for your salvation where you would just stop and say, God, if it's not for you, where would I be? Amen. If it's not for you choosing me out of nothing, out of total depravity, out of total darkness, out of total sin, out of absolute nothing, you chose me, and I don't know why, but I thank you, Lord. And you come to a place where you realize that God choosing you had absolutely nothing, absolutely nothing to do with you. And this is where we just stand in awe in his presence and say, I don't know why, but I'm so glad you did. Amen. I don't know how, but I'm so glad you did. Amen. If God is working in your heart, saints, that's why the New Testament, it says, harden not your hearts in rebellion if you can hear his voice. Not everyone in the scriptures could hear his voice. Not everyone in this world can hear his voice. But you can hear his voice. Yes. And if you can hear his voice and God is dealing with you in your life, you are the most blessed person on the face of the whole, whole earth. And that's what the heart of this message is about. In part one, we learned that Mount Zion, we discover who we are in Christ. In part two, we learned that from Mount Zion, reveals God's unconditional love. In part three, we learn that Mount Zion proclaims that I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Amen. And here today in part four, on Mount Zion, we will realize that we've been chosen. Amen. We've been chosen, hand-selected, a peculiar people, his own special people, a chosen generation, who he called out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. Can I hear an amen, saints? Amen. Hallelujah. You can turn to the book of Ephesians chapter 1. Um, we're going to continue from the two weeks ago when I preached. If you remember, I preached, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, on verses 1 through 3. But well, today we're going to preach on verses 4 through 7. Praise the Lord. Tell your neighbor, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Tell someone else, you're blessed, you're blessed, you're blessed. <laughs> Hallelujah. Brother Bob and Sister Yumi, they got that revelation. And them and their children been proclaiming 
as they shared at the GT meeting. Everywhere we go, when people ask how we do it, we tell them, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed. Amen. And then one time, um, they said, how you doing? How you doing today? And they said, oh, I'm doing good. And said, good, only good. And they said, no, I'm doing good because I'm blessed. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Look at Ephesians chapter 1. The scripture declares, Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God, to the saints who are in Ephesus, faithful in Christ Jesus, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ who has blessed us with what? Every spiritual blessing in heavenly places in Christ. Remember that, saints? Just look at verse 4. Just as we chose him. Right? Come on now. Can I get a witness? That's right, saints. Just as he chose us. Who did the choosing, us or him? Yes, we had nothing to do with it. But our flesh wants to think that we did because there's comfort in that. But there's an absolute trust. You have to put your absolute trust in God for you to know that 100% of the selection of you is only by him and nothing to do with you. But how many of you know, saints, that it's all right to put all of your trust in God? Amen. In him... He chose us in Him before the foundation of the world. So when did He choose you? That's right. Before Adam was even created. Before Adam even fell. God already knew His elect. God already knew that Jesus would redeem Adam's fall in Christ. God already planned out Calvary. He already planned the resurrection. He already knew before the world was even formed, before man was even created, that Adam would fall and that Adam's sinful nature would be in you from the day you were born. And he already knew before the world was even created that you were selected by God to be the redeemed of the Lord in Christ Jesus. Can I hear an amen, saints? Amen. So that's why God wasn't surprised when man fell. God was not surprised when you were born. And God was not surprised by every step in your life, every failure in your life, every mistake of your life. God is not surprised. In fact, God orchestrated every step of your life. Praise the Lord. Oh, if I just had my strong voice right now. Oh, I just want to preach this message so loud. Hallelujah. I'm going to try, saints. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's coming. It's coming. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. This is such a powerful message. That's why it makes me cry every time I think of this message. It makes me cry when I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he lift me up and turn me around, how he placed my feet on solid ground, makes me want to shout, hallelujah, saints. When I think about how God orchestrated every step of my life, from when I was a little baby, from when I was a little boy, till I was a teenager, until Myra discovered what kind of wonderful man she married, all the way till today, praise God. Flesh and blood has not revealed that to her. Praise God. All the way to today, when I think about the Lord and how he orchestrated every step of my life, it just makes me weep in his presence because I realize that I wasn't the one in control of my life. I wasn't the one dictating my steps. I wasn't the one flipping the page. I wasn't the one. It was Jesus. He was in control. He was the one who orchestrated every person that came into my life. Every hardship in my life. 
every affliction, every bit of confusion, my very nature, everything about me is ordained by God. And this is when you know that everything about you is in Christ. And this is when you can totally just rest in Him because you know that you're totally in Him. If you don't see yourself totally orchestrated by God, you cannot fully rest in Him because you're going to have some of your own strength. And your own strength, to the level of your own strength that you believe you have, is to the level that you cannot rest in Christ. <clears throat> so when you realize that you have no strength, this is when you can 100% rest in Christ. When you realize that you can do nothing, this is when everything in your life is in Christ. But if you believe that half of your life is orchestrated by your own decisions, then you can only rest half in Christ. Praise the Lord. And what the world calls, what, what the church calls balance, God calls mixture. That's not balance. You and Christ orchestrating your life is not balance. That's mixture. Because we're called to 100%. 100% grace. Only Christ. Only Christ. Sister Lucille, only Christ. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Verse 5, having predestined us unto adoption as sons by Jesus Christ to himself according to the good pleasure of his will. To the praise and glory of his grace by which he has made us accepted in the beloved. Because of his grace you are accepted in the beloved saints. Amen. Verse 7, finally, last verse. <clears throat> in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Praise the Lord. I'm sorry because of my throat, throat, throat. <laughs> this fan is bothering me a little bit. Hallelujah. So be blessed. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, the scripture says that we've been adopted as sons by Christ Jesus into himself according to his good pleasure. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. It's his good pleasure to bring you into his nature, into his family, as his child, as his daughter, as his son. That brings him pleasure. You know, there's a song that says, I take pleasure in worshiping you my Lord. You know, God's pleasure is having you. God's pleasure is proclaiming you as his son and join heir in Christ Jesus. He takes pleasure in that. As God is our pleasure, you are also his pleasure. He takes pleasure in loving you. He takes pleasure in pouring out his grace upon you. He takes pleasure in lavishing you daily with benefits. The scripture says he has so much love inside of him and it's his pleasure to pour out that love upon you, his sons and joint heirs in Christ Jesus. Can I hear an amen? amen. Praise the Lord. You have a voice. Can I hear an amen? amen? Hallelujah. Let me borrow your voice for about half an hour, Brother James. <laughs> Can I hear James Yamashiro? Amen. amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And you know, I, I was adopted as a, as a boy because my mom went home to be with the Lord at a young age. My dad went to Arizona. I was adopted as a young boy. But this kind of adoption, this spiritual adoption is different. You know, even though I got to live with a blessed auntie who took good care of me, <coughs> still yet, I never received my auntie's nature in adoption. I never became um, like her child in nature in adoption. But when God adopts you into his family, it's different than natural adoption. Amen. You actually receive his nature. Amen. You actually receive everything that he is. Amen. You literally become his child. Amen. 
You, be, you get his genes. You get his righteousness. You get his holiness. You get his desires. You get his attributes. Everything he is lives inside of you. Christ in me, the hope of glory. It's not like a natural adoption. This is a supernatural adoption where you literally become his son. No different than Jesus. You become his son, joint heirs in Christ Jesus. And the same amount that the father loves the son, to that same amount he loves his elect. Oh, hallelujah. That's a lot of love, saints. Praise the Lord. Can I hear an amen? amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The first time I heard the message of predestination, every religious wall in me rose up. And I had a difficult time receiving this message. But you know what? God is doing a work in our lives, saints. And as I begin to share what this message is about, I pray that every religious wall in your life would one by one begin to break down. Because if you can receive this message and see the revelation of it, you will truly be blessed. Why is it hard to receive the message? It's because this message totally removes any ounce of the flesh that wants to believe that I had something to do with my salvation. But Ephesians chapter 2 declares, by grace we have been saved through faith, not of ourselves. Say not of ourselves. It is a gift of God. Salvation is a gift of God. Not of works. Say not of works. Lest anyone should boast. Say boast. If salvation had anything to do with you, even if you don't try to boast, there's an automatic deposit of boasting within your spirit, even if you don't try to boast. If you had something to do with your salvation, there's deposited inside of you an automatic boast. Because that means I had something to do with it. God had something to do with it, and I had something to do with it. God can receive glory in his part, but your flesh is going to demand the glory that came from your part. But when we realize that we don't have a part, then we can declare to God be the glory, all the glory. I don't have to touch your glory because it has nothing to do with me. It's all you, Lord. You brought me out of total depravity. You brought my feet out of the miry clay and set it upon a rock. You brought me out of total darkness. That's why the scripture didn't only say we were in darkness. The scripture says that we were darkness. Imagine that darkness is not only around you. Darkness was in you. That's right. That means everywhere you go, you take darkness with you. Even if you're in a lighted room, you're still in darkness. Until the light of the gospel by God's grace shines on you. And that's 100%. The work of God, nothing to do with you. Can you hear an amen? amen? This is why this message will kill and destroy any thought that would share in the glory of your salvation. So did God who? So did I choose God or did God choose me? That's right, saints. Did you know that even your decision to accept Christ was only made possible because God graced you to make that decision. Amen. But you might say, but I received Jesus. I believe in him. That God account for something. Yeah, that counts for the glory of God that his grace came upon you that you could believe. Amen. You see, God initiated first in your total depraved situation. He initiated by his grace to open your eyes that you could see the gospel. To open your ears that you could hear the gospel. To soften your heart that you could comprehend the gospel. And open your mind that you may understand the gospel. And open your spirit that you may receive the gospel. God did all this by his grace. He opened everything that was shut. And he opened it and like a magnet he drew you to himself. 
He drew you to himself. He called you by name. And he said, now that everything is open, come.